Hey guys, welcome back to Mad Backyard. Today we're gonna to be smoking some baby back ribs on our Pit Boss pellet grill. We're gonna show you how to prep them, season them, and smoke them all right on your Pit Boss. So stay tuned. All right, so before we get into how we're gonna cook our baby backs, let's talk about picking out ribs at the store and what you need to look for when you're buying baby back ribs. Now there's two kinds of pork ribs you'll find at the store, baby back ribs and spare ribs. And to make it even more confusing, they tend to label them lots of different things. So when you're looking for baby backs, they're not always gonna be labeled baby back ribs. These ones today are here on the front, but uh, you can see sometimes they're also labeled uh, loin back ribs or pork back ribs, or sometimes just back ribs. These ones are nice because they went ahead and labeled them every single type for us. But really what you're looking for is back in the title. So even if it doesn't say baby back ribs, if you see loin back or pork back ribs, they're gonna be baby back ribs. So that's baby back ribs, that's what we're cooking today. The other type you'll see are spare ribs, and we are gonna do some videos coming up soon about how to cook spare ribs on your pit boss. You might also see those labeled as St. Louis cut ribs. St. Louis cut just means that they've been trimmed into a nice uh, clean rectangular shape, making them easier to handle and, and uh, deal with, but um, they're still spare ribs. So you've got baby back ribs and spare ribs. Now spare ribs are kind of a uh, fattier, uh, more tougher meat, and they're delicious when they're cooked right, but they take a lot longer to cook. So make sure you're not following a recipe or any guidance about how to cook spare ribs when you're doing baby backs. So make sure when you're picking out baby backs, it does say baby back or loin back or pork back or back somewhere in the title. That's what we're cooking today. Okay, when you're picking out your baby back ribs, um, you wanna try to find nice uh, meaty rack of ribs that has a decent amount of fat over the top. Like I said, most of the meat in baby backs compared to spare ribs is a leaner, whiter pork meat, similar to what you find in a pork loin or pork chop. Um, so you want that fat on top to kind of help buffer that meat from drying out while it's cooking. For that same reason, we're not gonna be trimming a lot of fat off of these today. In fact, on this particular rack, I don't think I'm gonna trim any fat. If you had some larger uh, strands kind of coming off the sides over here are hanging. Uh, you know, use a good uh, knife like this boning one from Amarku to get rid of those so they're not just like hanging off. But uh, this one's pretty well trimmed already, so we're gonna pretty much leave it alone. On baby back ribs, most of the meat is on the tops of the ribs versus spare ribs, more of the meat is in between each bone. Um, so the baby backs are more of a curved shape. Uh, little trick when you're picking out baby backs at the store, they're all about 12, 13 ribs or so. They're all the same size. So if you get one that weighs a little more, you know it's gonna have a little more meat on it as well. So I was looking last night at ribs. They had some that were $9, $10. This one was about uh, $13. So it obviously weighed a little more. So I knew it had a little more meat on top and we're gonna get a little meatier uh, baby backs to smoke today. Once you've trimmed up any fat, if you need to trim any at all, you're gonna flip over the rack of ribs and take a look at the back. Now on the back of our baby backs, there's a uh, membrane that runs across uh, the bottoms of the ribs here. You wanna remove this membrane before you start cooking the ribs because it lets the seasoning uh, penetrate into the ribs a little better. It's also not very appetizing to bite into uh, and it makes the ribs easier to cut later on if you remove the membrane. So to remove this membrane, we're gonna kinda go along the edge and try to find a little spot. You can see there's a little one in the middle here where it's kinda coming away. We're gonna work our finger underneath the membrane like that. And you can see we're between the meat and the membrane. We're gonna kind of work it down as best we can, trying to just pull it away from the bones. And sometimes you can get a good grip on it and pull it off in one uh, motion. Sometimes you can use a paper towel to get a little better grip on it and pull it away. All right, so we've gotten that main membrane off. There is a second really, really thin membrane that runs along underneath that membrane between this layer of fat, under this layer of fat. So uh, that one we don't wanna remove. So if your ribs already look like this and all you see is this tiny, tiny, thin layer of membrane, it probably means the store already removed it for you. Don't go crazy trying to remove this or else your whole rack of ribs is gonna fall apart. 
All right, let's get these ribs seasoned up. We're gonna be using two kinds of rubs today. The first one is a Famous Dave's Rib Rub. It's one of my favorite rubs to use on pork. It's got a really sweet flavor profile. The other one is a Cosmos Dirty Bird. Uh, this one has a little more uh, heat to it, a little more spice, a little more garlic. And uh, um, we're gonna be using kind of both together to kind of get some sweet and savory and spicy uh, flavors going on. And I'm hoping that using the two together will turn out really well. I'll put links to both these rubs down in the video description below. So to get the rub to stick, we're actually gonna be using some yellow mustard. If you watched our pulled pork video, we do the same thing on our pork butts. And uh, it's really just used as a way to get the rub to stick onto the meat itself. It's not gonna give the ribs much of a mustard flavor. We're using just a very, very thin little coat here. And if you really have a strong aversion to mustard, you can use olive oil or even try it without any uh, emulsifier at all. But I really like using mustard on pork um, to get the rub to stick well. So we're just gonna get a little Thin layer going there on the front and then also the back. Again, you don't need a ton and you will not taste this by the time the ribs are done cooking, I promise. So we're gonna start off with the Famous Dave's Rib Rub. Get a nice base layer of that sweet seasoning on there. And then we're gonna come over the top with the Cosmos uh, Dirty Bird on top of that. Then we're gonna flip it over. And again, have your black nitro glove on one hand so you can touch the meat and move the rub around and keep your other hand clean for uh, spreading your rubs. That's the rib rub. Now we're gonna come over with the Cosmos Dirty Bird. Make sure you're seasoning up the sides as well. Once you've seasoned your baby backs, let the rubs set on the meat for at least 30 minutes before you put them on the smoker. You want the salt and the seasonings to draw some moisture out of the meat and kind of form a paste on the outside. That paste on the outside of the ribs that the seasoning forms is really what's gonna absorb a lot of smoke flavor when you put them on the pit boss and help form the bark as they cook. You can even do this the night before and wrap them in plastic wrap. It'll save you some time the next day when you're cooking and it also helps the rub penetrate the meat overnight and really form a nice paste on the outside before you start smoking them on your pit boss. All right, now let's get the pit boss started to smoke these baby back ribs. Today we're gonna to be using these bourbon barrel oak pellets from Bear Mountain. These pellets are actually made from old bourbon whiskey barrels. so They put off a really nice aroma and flavor profile when you smoke with them. As you can see, I like to keep my pellets in an airtight container like this one from Oklahoma Joe's. The nice thing about keeping them in a good pellet bucket like this is they'll last a heck of a lot longer. If you keep them in the bag, especially outside or in the hopper, um, exposed to the elements and humidity and everything else, the pellets tend to absorb moisture and swell up and they don't work as well. Uh, number one, they won't create as much smoke for you. And uh, number two, they won't last as long and they'll burn, they'll burn through a lot faster because they lose their density. So as you've probably seen, pellets aren't cheap and they'll last a lot longer for you uh, if you get a good bucket like this to keep them in. So it's a good investment if when you start getting into pellet grilling. This one from Oklahoma Joe's I particularly like because it's got a good solid lid on it. You can label the front. I've got a whole bunch of these that I use to keep all my pellets organized. And you can see once you take off the top, it's got a good uh, mesh screen here and a scoop to kind of help you get your pellets out. The nice thing about the mesh screen is you can shake out Sawdust kind of falls to the bottom so that that doesn't end up in your hopper. The sawdust from the pellets doesn't burn as well or create as good smoke, so you want to keep that out of there. I'll put a link to these Oklahoma Joe pellet buckets, as well as the bourbon whiskey barrel pellets we're using today, down in the video description below. All right, so we're going to get some of these bourbon barrel pellets going in our Pit Boss hopper. Make sure to check out the video we made on how to empty your Pit Boss hopper so you can easily switch out the types of pellets you're using for the different foods you're cooking. All right, so we plugged in our Pit Boss. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on now. We're gonna open the lid and let it run through its startup cycle. We made a video on how to start and season a new Pit Boss that goes through everything you need to know about the startup cycle on the Pit Boss. So if you're not familiar with that, make sure to check that out first. We're gonna let the Pit Boss run through its startup cycle. Then we're gonna turn the temperature up to 250 degrees and get our ribs on.
All right, we've gone through the startup cycle. Now we're gonna set our temperature to 250 degrees. Get a few minutes to come up to that temperature and then we'll get our ribs on. All right, the pit boss is up to 250 degrees. It's time to get our baby backs on. You can see by giving the rub time to set, we've got a nice paste formed on the outside and that's really gonna help us absorb some good smoke flavor. So let's go ahead and open our lid and get the ribs on. I found that the left side of my pit boss gets a little hotter than the right side, so I tend to put the bigger side of any piece of meat I'm cooking on the left side and the smaller piece on the right side. Then we're going to go ahead and close our lid. I chose 250 degrees because it seems to be a good sweet spot on the pit boss for cooking ribs. You can go up to 275 if you want to cook them a little faster, although I have found that the center portion of the pit boss, uh, right above the fire pot, tends to get a little hotter relative to the other parts of the pit boss the higher you go. So the lower temperature you can manage to uh, cook your food at on the pit boss, the more even your temperature will be. Now we've made a couple easy modifications to our pit boss to help with those temperature variations, especially over the ash pot. Um, we're gonna be doing a video about what we did pretty soon, so make sure to hit subscribe so you get notified when that comes out. All right, now that we've got our baby backs on the pit boss, let's talk about how we're gonna go through the cooking process on these. Now one method you may have heard a lot about is the 3-2-1 method. And what the 3-2-1 method when you're cooking ribs refers to is uh, three hours on the pit boss with smoke, just like we just put it on, two hours then wrapped in foil to help get the meat tender and more fall off the bone, and then another hour back on the pit boss unwrapped to help firm everything back up and finish them off. Now the 3 2, one method works great for pork spare ribs. Those are the other type of ribs I talked about at the beginning, um, and they're a fattier, uh, tougher piece of meat that takes longer to cook. If we did the full 3 2, one method with our baby backs, we would definitely overcook them. So we're gonna follow the same type of process, but we're gonna do less time in each stage. So at 250 degrees on our pit boss, we're gonna do about two hours of smoke unwrapped, then about 45 minutes to an hour wrapped in foil, and then about 30 minutes unwrapped when we put our sauce on at the end. So we're going to let these baby backs smoke here in the first stage at 250 degrees and then we'll come back in a little while and check and see how they're doing. All right, the baby back ribs have been smoking on the pit boss for about one hour. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. You can see some uh, fat starting to render in certain spots. It'll get a little more uh, as we go along. Um, what I'm gonna do is spray these with some uh, Pepsi. You can use Coke or Pepsi, make sure it's regular. Um, you can also use uh, apple juice or apple cider vinegar if you don't want the sugar. And what this is gonna do is help keep the outside moist while we're smoking them here during the first stage so they don't dry out too much. Just a little bit, you don't have to go crazy. And then we're gonna close the lid, let them smoke for about another hour. All right, it's been about two hours since we put the ribs on and I gotta say this uh, bourbon barrel uh, pellet smoke smells phenomenal. Um, so we're gonna take a look at how these look now after two hours during this first stage smoking them. So you can definitely see a lot more fat is coming through um, and that's really what we're looking for to, be, to know that we're done with this stage. So you can see some fat coming through, it's starting to render. Um, you can see that uh, it is starting to split a little in a couple spots. Let this smoke dissipate a little bit but you can see it is starting to split a little bit in a couple spots. I did spray it a few more times with the uh, Pepsi, and that's gonna help keep that meat from splitting and getting too dry on the uh, pit boss during this first stage. So you don't have to go crazy with the spray, but just enough to kind of keep it moist and keep that outer layer from getting too dry. Let's kind of see where we are temperature-wise, just to get a, uh, an idea. So if we go kind of into the center here, so we're at about 168 degrees, 169. So we're gonna eventually try to get these ribs up to about 203, 205 is gonna be the final uh, temperature. You can see we've also formed kind of a nice bark on the outside. The rub's not moving at this point. So we're looking for that as well uh, when we get to this stage. So our bark is set, fat's starting to render. We're up to about 165 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and get this off and get it wrapped. So if you come over here, what I did is I uh, set up a nice long piece of foil and I usually put it inside a uh, aluminum pan like this just, just to catch any drippings or juice and to make it a little easier to keep everything contained. And I'm gonna take some uh, brown sugar and sprinkle it. It's getting humid out here. I'm gonna take some brown sugar and sprinkle it in the bottom. And you don't have to do this, um, especially if you're trying to watch your sugar. You can uh, 
skip this part and just the juices from the ribs will be enough to keep everything moist. But if you want, just go a little bit extra, kind of doing what some of the competition barbecue chefs do. A little brown sugar, a little butter, and a little honey. Just to give it a little extra richness, moisture, and help keep that uh, leaner white meat from the baby back ribs uh, nice and moist and uh, flavorful while it's um, cooking in the foil. So we're gonna go ahead and take it off the pit boss. Make sure when you're uh, lifting up your ribs, it's a lot easier to do it with uh, your cloth gloves and your regular gloves on top of it, uh, on top of the cloth gloves, rather than trying to do this with tongs and spatulas and things that get a little awkward. This will help protect your hands from the uh, hot grates and hot meat. So we're gonna go ahead and lift it up, bring it over, and I'm gonna turn these face down so that that meat is right in our seasoning there. Okay. And then we're going to wrap it up nice and tight. put it right back on the pit boss, still face down so that our meat stays in that butter and brown sugar mixture and that's gonna to start to melt real quick and start basting our meat. We're gonna keep it on 250 degrees. We're gonna close our lid. And we're gonna let it continue to cook there for about 30 minutes or so before we check it again. Like I said, for this second stage, we're not gonna go a full two hours like we would on the 3-2-1 method with our spare ribs. If you cook baby backs in the foil for a full two hours, they're probably gonna be completely falling off the bone and falling apart. We want them to pull away from the bone cleanly so they have that fall off the bone texture, but we don't want them completely falling apart when we take them out of the foil. So we're gonna check them after about 30 minutes and we'll probably look to go for about 45 to 60 minutes in total. So we'll meet you back here in about 30 minutes. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes, so the baby backs have been on the pit boss for about two and a half hours total. Let's take a look at how they're looking now. I'm just gonna unwrap and take a peek. So you can see all that butter and sugar and everything melted underneath the baby back, so the meat's getting nice and happy down there. What we're looking for, these aren't done being wrapped just yet, but what we are looking for is the meat to start to pull away from the bones, like on that one. We want to see that a little more pronounced. We were at about 169 before we wrapped them. Now we're at about uh, 180, 188, 189. So like I said, we want to get these up to about 203, 205 total. So we're going to rewrap them, keep them on for about another 30 minutes or so, look for those uh, bones to start popping through a little more. That's another reason it's important to take that membrane off at the beginning or else that can't happen. That membrane kind of acts like glue to hold everything in place. So um, we're gonna wrap these back up, do another 30 minutes and that'll end up being an hour total wrap. So two hours smoked, one hour wrapped and we'll take a look at how they're doing at that point. Okay, it's been another 30 minutes, so they've been uh, wrapped on the pit bus here for an hour total. Let's take a look at where we are. All right. Let's check our temperature again. So now, kind of hard to see. Yeah, right at that 203, 205 level. Perfect, all right, we're gonna take these off. So what I recommend is when you take them out of the foil, carefully lift the whole kind of boat of juices and ribs and everything else back over to your aluminum foil tray. That way you're not gonna lose the juices. You wanna save those, at least I like to save them, uh, to mix with your sauce. So don't let those go to waste, they're delicious. So let's take a look at what the other side of the ribs looks like. Yeah, it's looking real good. So you can see it, it got real tender, but we want to uh, firm up the bark, firm the bark back up on the top of the ribs here. So we're gonna put this back on the pit boss, still keeping at uh, 250 degrees. 
turn around this way so you can see a little better. And while those firm back up here, we're gonna get our sauce ready. For our sauce today, we're going with Blues Hog Champions Blend. I like this because it's kind of a cross between two of my other favorite Blues Hog uh, brands, the Blues Hog Original, which is kind of a thick, sweet, uh, really flavorful uh, sauce, um, and then the Tennessee Red, which I love to use on pulled pork. This is kind of a cross between both, so you get the sweetness from the original, but then also some vinegariness from the Tennessee Red mixed together in this Champions Blend. So we're gonna go ahead and put this uh, in a bowl here. And then, like I said, I like to set aside a little bit of the uh, juice from when we wrapped it. I put it in a fat separator here just to get some of the oiliness from the top off. And we're gonna add just a little bit, just to give it a little extra richness. And then we're gonna mix these together. All right, so let's come over and take a look at our ribs. They've been on for about 25, 30 minutes or so. You can see the bark firmed back up here for us. Um, so this is the time you wanna put the sauce on. Don't put it on right when you take it out of the foil or else everything's gonna kinda of mix together. Let that uh, bark firm back up and now we can start putting the sauce on. So we're gonna go ahead and take a basting brush and just start kinda of gently putting it on. Wanna make sure to really cover every part of the ribs. Gonna give this about another 15 minutes just for the sauce to firm up. We're gonna keep it right at 250 degrees. The sauce has been on the baby backs for 15 minutes. Let's see how they look. Those look really good. You can see how the sauce firmed up a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and take these off. We're gonna put them on our cutting board here. Now, once you get the ribs off, don't slice into them immediately. Let them rest for another 15 minutes or so. So just to recap, we did two hours of smoke, one hour wrapped, about 30 minutes firming the rub back up, and then we put the sauce on for 15 more minutes. So three hours and 45 minutes of cooking time total at 250 degrees. Now we're gonna go ahead and slice these baby backs. The easiest way to do this is to flip the whole rack up on one edge so you can see the bones a lot easier, okay? You're gonna take a good meat slicing knife like this one from Merico. It'll go right through the meat and uh, won't tear up your ribs as you're slicing them, giving you good even slices. And you're gonna start in between two ribs and just work your way down. Kind of tilt it back as you go so they fall back. Good, and then we're gonna go between these two. Just like that. You can see our baby back stayed nice and juicy. Lots of meat on these. All right, these look really good. Let's take a bite and see how we did. Mm, really good. They pull right away from the bone, but they're not falling apart either. Good amount of smoke flavor from those bourbon barrel pellets we used. Um, some heat from the Dirty Bird rub and plenty of sweetness from the um, Famous Dave's rib rub as well as the Blues Hog Champion blend we used uh, there at the end. If you want to check out the full step-by-step -step recipe that accompanies this video at madbackyard.com, make sure to click the link down in the video description below. 
If you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and turn on your notifications so that you get new Pit Boss videos every time we make them. And check out our Pit Boss playlist for more Pit Boss recipes that you can make at home just like this one. And thanks for watching.